Hi guys, it's Sarah again. Thanks very much for clicking on my video. I really hope you enjoyed today's video because I loved creating this one and I've been really excited about showing it to you. This was created for my mum and she turned 70 on Monday. Happy birthday, mum. Um, thankfully, she really liked this painting so she's really excited about hanging it up on her wall painted this in her favourite colours which are which is purple so shades of purple and kind of pink so let's run through the colours that I'm using today I've poured over the background of the whole canvas a mixture of pale umber and titanium white there's not a great deal of pale umber in this paint but I wanted something that was a real sort of creamy off-white colour so that's the background the three colours that I'm then using for the flowers are Windsor Violet, which is the purple one in the middle on the right hand side there. Silver at the top and at the bottom is Permanent Magenta with a little bit of Opera Rose mixed in. All of the paints have been mixed with Liquitex pour medium and a little bit of warm water and there's no silicone in any of the paints. I'm not looking for cells but because I'm using a metallic silver as I always get with metallics I will get some small cells but I was quite happy with having small cells. I didn't want big cells that would ruin the aesthetic of the flowers that I'm trying to blow today. So as usual when I blow my paints around I'm using a piece of aquarium tubing flexible plastic tubing I don't use straws because they're not long enough I mean that they would be fine if I wasn't filming because I just put my head over the canvas but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing so to keep my head out of frame I use this long piece of tubing I also find actually that it's better than a straw because of its flexibility you can wiggle it around a lot easier the downside of blowing, anyone that's done this before will know, the downside of blowing like this is that you do, after a little while, get condensation building up in the tube that will sometimes drip out onto the painting. So as you can see, I'm just layering really very tiny puddles of the paints down and then blowing them in a very controlled way to create kind of flower patterns. This is quite similar to the Dutch pour technique, but as I say, in a more controlled way, creating the puddles, putting a white over the top, and then blowing them out. But I wouldn't be able to achieve this kind of look with this many flowers on the canvas if I used a hairdryer. And I wanted this to be a lot of negative space, but with, I was aiming initially for three or four flowers, I think I ended up with five or six composition just felt right having one big one a few smaller ones and and one running off the edge if anyone's wondering what kind of flowers these are supposed to be i have no idea they are flowers of my imagination. <laughs>
I'm just going over the whole surface with my little butane chef's torch to burst any air bubbles that are in the paint, of which there are usually a lot when you do this technique because you are blowing air under and all around the paint, so you do get a lot of bubbles. Let's go in for a close-up look at all the flowers that I've blown. So this is the varnishing, this is probably nearly three weeks after I poured it, doing the first coat of varnish. It had three coats of varnish which were left for probably at least 24 or 48 hours in between coats and I'm just using Liquitex gloss varnish straight out of the bottle there with a tiny bit of water added to thin it each time because I'm going to do multiple coats. I mean, there, there were literally just a few millimetres of water in there. So I don't use brushes, I think, for any of my varnishes anymore. I only use varnishes that I pour, whether that's the Minwax Polycrylic or the Liquitex Gloss Varnish. Those are the two varnishes that I use to pour on like this. And the only other varnish I use is a spray varnish, which is the Liquitex. Uh, I can't remember whether I'm currently using satin or gloss, but Liquitex spray varnish and those are really the only only varnishes I use so as you can see I've just poured it over and um, massaging it into the canvas all the way around the edges all over the top and I do the same process each layer that I pour on if you are going to pour these varnishes on you do need to make sure you tilt the canvas up and let as much as possible of that varnish run off so that it leaves a very thin coat uh, otherwise you do risk getting cracking in your varnish and you also want to make sure if you are varnishing a painting that has silicone in it you thoroughly clean that silicone off before you varnish i clean my silicone off by using tolkien powder and uh, a cotton wool makeup pad go over the whole thing with tolkien powder uh, to soak up the silicone, the oil that's on the top. I do that a couple of times, then I dampen a paper towel and wipe all of the Tolkien powder off the surface. And then the final thing I do is to put some alcohol onto a paper towel and give the whole thing a, a very gentle but thorough wipe over with alcohol. You don't want to do that rough or hard and you don't want too much alcohol or you will risk getting paint coming off. So the final thing once you've done your coat of varnish is just to very lightly run over it with the a chef's torch just to burst any air bubbles that are left in that coat of varnish. And leave that for, like I say, I leave that for at least 24 hours before I will do the next coat. And this painting had three coats before it was finished. Here are some finished pictures of it varnished and hanging on the wall. This is hanging on my wall, not on the wall at my mum's house. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next time.